Good afternoon and welcome back to Gulfstream Park. Thank you for joining us here this afternoon on Gulfstream Today. I'm Gabby Gaudet, joined by Acacia Courtney. And it is Wednesday afternoon. We've only uh, had one day to recuperate from President's Day weekend, but it was a great weekend. And we do are, we're looking at some nice carryovers um, for this afternoon and 11 races on tap. We do, it does look like we might um, have a chance of rain later this afternoon, but we will keep you posted on the weather. As of right now, all races are still on the turf, so just keep an eye out for that. It's pretty windy at the moment, though, so we're going to try to hold on to our, our papers and our hats and everything and get through this morning show. But uh, well, as you said, we'll keep you posted as the day does go on. We have some nice races on tap. We do. And uh, we'll go now to our wagering menu. Of course, we start things off in race one with that rolling super high five. And well, you have 12 horses to choose from the first half of the card. Uh, big, big fields here. So race one, rolling super high five, and also um, the early pick five does kick off in the opener, 50 cent early pick five, races one through five. Acacia will have a ticket for that. As we move along to the sixth race on the card, it does kick off the 20 cent rainbow six, a carryover over $170,000 in that carryover. And we get to race seven, it does start the 50 cent late pick Five. Again, Acacia will have tickets for the early and late pick five. I will have a ticket for the rainbow six. But as we mentioned, right now we are fast and firm, currently on the turf. It does look like there will be some precipitation later today, but we started off with a 12.35 p.m. first post. And, well, we have a lot to get to. So, of <laughs> course, we start off with the early pick five. All right, we'll give you a look at my ticket. $48 for me to start things off today. I'm using four horses in the first leg that you see early on in the wagering, eight to five right now on a second time starter for trainer Michael Matz in Fuerza who I do like quite a bit in the opener here using just two in the second race and then three in the third and two in the fourth and the fifth $48 once again. Okay, $48 to start things off, going the mile onto the turf course for this very competitive maiden special weight. And I thought there was a lot going on in here and probably several options to choose from, but you and I both land on the one Fuerza, a second time starter for trainer Michael Madsen. I like this horse, although from a statistics standpoint, it kind of tells you not to bet a horse like this with going a distance of ground on the turf in their, just their second start for Michael Matz. Only six for six. 62, that's 10% and a negative ROI. But I did think, I, I thought that she ran perfect in debut. And if she can improve upon that whatsoever, I thought she could really be competitive against this field. She really did look like she came in well prepared in her first start. We normally do see from the Barn of Michael Matz, first time starters, perhaps not um, the well most well-known angle for him, a more patient approach for it. But in that race last time up, it was won by a Chad Brown first-time starter on the turf, and she did it um, with open lengths and volatility index in there. But the pace setter was far ahead, a 13-to-1 shot, who was pretty rank on the lead out front. Um, but did uh, but I thought that Fuerza kept on pretty well. And actually, uh, excuse me, she uh, showed some in interest in there and kept on well to close in there and get third-place finisher Javier Cal Castellano stays aboard. So I thought off of all of those things, she was the horse in here, but certainly would take a little bit of a cautious approach, as you said, with those stats. Yeah, for sure. I thought she was well prepared first time out. Um, it, she looked like a typical first time starter for Michael Matz, just maybe not 100% um, ready to go, but she could really improve off of that performance. And we get Javier Castellano in the saddle, but some alternatives in here. The three Tisbury is a horse first time four trainer, uh, Bill Mott. And this is a horse who we saw back at Aqueduct. And I like this horse for the exacta, uh, maybe not win purposes. I like that he ha she has some natural speed, but Church Social was the winner and she came back to run eighth and an allowance here at Gulfstream just uh, a few weeks ago. And I, I don't know how strong that race really was that she comes out of. And the third place finisher, you do see Say Sinsen came back to win next time out. She received just a 65 fire speed figure for her next race, switching 
to the dirt, um, getting her win, though it was in special weight company. But she's kind of been racking up those second place finishers, Tisbury has. Her last four races, so four out of five, have been finishing second. Now she's making her first start for trainer Bill Mott. She's had some works here at Payson Park, and I definitely think that she's one to respect. She does have to kind of take a next step forward and get out of second gear, but she's one to respect off of those past races. And when it's all said and done, maybe the race will just go to a Chad Brown <laughs> horse, and that's the two, if you say so. Getting this horse previously off of Graham Motion, and I thought Graham did a great job with her. You know, he well spotted her at Tampa, at Pimlico, and even Delaware, trying to break her maiden on the turf, and she just doesn't look like she's got a, a lot of punch in the late stages of the race, and not really a will to win, but Chad Brown, always dangerous on the turf here. Especially a one to take note of, and she's been kind of going off the turf, turf, something synthetic races as well. So uh, we'll see how this one does transfer her form. She certainly bred for the turf and has been working on the Palmetto's turf course. All right, we'll turn the page to the second race on the card, an open 6250 claiming event, five and a half furlongs onto the main track. And we have uh, George Nav Jorge Navarro trainee here, second off the claim, um, and that is the one Lil Meatball. Lil Meatball <laughs> with a, it's a great name. It's, it's just always fun to say. Uh, so Lil Meatball, Louis Sias climbing aboard and taking a drop in class for his second start off the claim. And this horse does have some back class. He was running in stakes competition when he was trained by Dave Braddy, was claimed, and he had been kind of steadily going down the claiming ranks, if you will, unfortunately. But uh, last time out, he I was stepping up in competition off the claim. And Bling's Express was just the fastest horse in that race. And so unfortunately, Lil Meatball was up against it. He now goes back to this open 6250 level where it does look like he could be competitive. And as you said, um, now Louis Sias in the saddle. And that's the thing with him. Previously, you know, he has a lot of back class, he even uh, ran against Stakes Company, graded Stakes Company. But he recently won a non winners of three lifetime. He did not show up on Claiming Crown Day. He didn't show up against Open 6250 Claiming Company either. So, second off the claim, it could. His, his performance first off the claim was a career best. So the thinking there was, okay, well, he ran so well last time out, really improved, so why step him back down to the bottom? Um, so I did respect him, but I went to the four flashing cat instead, and we've kind of shown this all along. Gilberto Zerpa first off the claim with these kind of low-level claimers on the dirt. He just does a fantastic job, and I'm not trying to fix something that isn't broken here. The four flashing cat, I think, is definitely going to like the cut back in distance. He will. His record here at this distance is two starts, a win and a second. So he's had success here going the five and a half furlongs. He was sprinting, uh, even winning at seven, eight. So I guess they tried to stretch him out a bit to the mile last time. And he was bumped really hard at the break last time out as well and was pretty wide early, though he did try to show some speed on that stretch out. But I think he's much better sprinting. So absolutely respect him in here too and using both of these horses on the pick five. Okay, we'll start off with the one in the four, four, one, flip flop and exact as we get to the third race on the card, a starter allowance, 50,000 um, mile onto the turf course. And I think we should go back and take a look at a couple of performances in here. And one of them being where Blue Harbor and Auto met each other um, last time out. Now this is two starts back for Blue Harbor, but wanted to show the break here because we can see the number one Auto. He just breaks kind of awkwardly. There was really nothing that happened. He didn't get bumped or anything like that, but just breaks a little bit slowly. And we can see Paco Lopez just kind of putting his hands down on, on his withers and letting him kind of go from there. But then we see uh, Blue Harbor in here who did make the lead. He was uh, vying down the stretch against Galleon Mass, another Dave Fox horse, whereas Otto, he is down on the inside. He kind of has to shift gears, and he's closing from off of it. I thought he had some really nice momentum in the late stages of the race, and you have to remember, that was his first start off of a layoff. It was. It was about three months from October to January, and he was coming out of um, a 40,000 non-winners of two claiming event at Belmont on the turf. He had shipped down to Florida. He was in starter allowance company last time, and it was a pretty salty field, and Blue Harbor is always game. Unfortunately, he just seems to be a horse that often finds some trouble or perhaps some stronger competitors. It, I do think it was a really good setup for Otto, and I thought he actually ran well, all things considered. Hopefully he breaks a bit sharper today, and um, he looks like he's been working well on the Palmetto's turf course since. 
And I think we have a stat here for Jimmy Bond that is second off the layoff going in distance to ground on the turf. We do. Second off the layoff in turf route races. Not the biggest sample size, but he does very well. 21% win, 33% of the time in the money, and a slightly positive ROI of 205. But it just looks like this horse is moving in the right direction. And the thing with four, the four Blue Harbor, um, last time out, he was actually in kind of a jackpot on the back stretch. He kept on checking behind horses, and he just couldn't get a really um, fluid kind of race, especially on the back stretch. And on top of that, Acacia, I think this is a horse that likes to be close or on the lead because you see how game he was two starts back. He did not want to lose going against Galley and Mast. And I think it just kind of takes a little bit out of him to have to close from off the pace. Not saying he can't win in that position, but he just looks better when he's on the lead. I totally agree with you. I think he's more comfortable being up front there. And when he, when he does have to try and... Uh, uh, come from a bit off of it. As he said, it looks like he's a horse that does kind of find trouble. He had to check repeatedly last time out. But when he does show that early speed, it looks like he is much more comfortable. Um, it, he could perhaps be the main speed in here today. It's probably going to be uh, maybe a couple of their horses that are, are forwardly placed. But if he gets on the lead, I think that's where he's the most dangerous. But a horse that would really appreciate a hot pace is the number three, Uncle Kai, who kind of took advantage last time weaving through traffic to get the win. And we'll show that uh, stretch run last time out. This was on the 1st of February. Now, this was when he was trained by uh, Mike Maker. And we can see Shiny Badge was the pace setter. And Shiny Badge is kind of on the lead that day. Shiny Badge is um, coming back in this race. And I thought it was a good performance from Shiny Badge. He just couldn't kind of sustain his speed. But we can see the number eight Uncle Guy. First he's outside, then he's inside, then he's splitting horses, then he's coming up the rail, and then he's not. Then he decides to angle out under Jose Ortiz. I thought this was a fantastic ride. And we can see Shiny Badge was the pace setter, and he still hung in there. So this horse was just much the best, and he completely ran down the rest of the field. However, it's always dangerous with the these horses that are um, do come from off of it if they can work out a trip. Jose Ortiz is back in the saddle. He's the guy to do it. But it's not always easy making a lateral move or even improving off of Mike Maker off on the turf. No, it's definitely not. And you do like to see that Jose Ortiz stays after the claim. But to kind of get a, a good setup and a good trip like that, yet again, I don't know if it was exactly a, a smooth trip at all, um, beating Artie Type for trainer Chad Brown in there. And as you said, shiny badge, some nice speed. But this is a pretty good field. And you and I both had some interest in Wagon Boss now second off the layoff. And uh, that's pretty much the reason being. I like the horse with a, a little bit of um, seasoning under his belt now making his third start off of the layoff. As we get to the fourth race, a 62.59 winners of two lifetime uh, claiming event going the one turn mile onto the main track. And we both land towards the inside to the one after Cheyenne for trainer Nick Zito. And I, I kind of landed on this horse. I guess it's probably through process of elimination. There was the scratch of the number seven, Menohune, who does seem to kind of just be stuck finishing well and finishing in the money. And uh, Thunder of Fleet, the five horse in here, is stretching back out to the mile, which is probably one of his uh, stronger distances. But it just looks like a horse that has a hard time winning. So I landed on after Cheyenne, who switched to the dirt last time out and showed some speed. He did kind of fade against a couple other horses, the other two that I was just mentioning. But I think that he can take a step forward. You have the team of Nick and Nick, of Nick Zito and Nick Juarez. And as I said, kind of through process of elimination in this field. Well, I really like him in here just because he draws the rail post position. He's got speed. And now with the scratch of Menehune, who figured to press the pace, he's out. So he very well could be low in speed. And we see in these kind of situations, Nick Ware is a very smart rider, a savvy in that, that he kind of handicaps the field and, all right, let's go from the rail post and I think that's going to be necessary for after Cheyenne and look he broke from the outermost post position nine of nine so he had to be used a, a little bit more than probably what he wanted to get into position early so uh, it changes really the whole strategy of the race especially with the scratch of Menehune I like him even better with that particular scratch and then uh, we're looking at maybe second place performances with the five Thunder of Fleet but he sometimes just does not like to win we can see him <laughs> racking up a lot of seconds. He is just one for 20, and then he has eight second and third place finishes. Didn't show up last time at the 7-8, so it's incredibly wide, though. Now back to the mile, as I mentioned. 
we'll get to the fifth race on the card and open 12,500 uh, claiming event. Six furlongs onto the main track, scratch the three caddy cat. And um, we do have a horse in here that would figure to take some money. That is the number eight right up my alley towards the outside. And it will start off with this horse because we have a stat on him and he'll take money with a big drop in class. He definitely will. And I'll show a trainer stat on trainer Michael Tomlinson that did kind of talk me off of this horse, if you will. This is turf to dart uh, in claiming races, sprinting. It's just one for 10, eight for 10 in the money, but it's a 70 cent ROI. And this horse, even if you go back to his last dirt race, it was against $50,000 claiming types, but he didn't really show up uh, at all in that race. And um, last time out in his couple starts, he seemed like he wanted to maybe show some speed on the turf, so wondering if that will help him transfer his form, and plus a huge drop in class, but I just had to kind of take a wait and see. He has not won run one race on the dirt that I could have confidence. <laughs> and so and with it, all that considering with a short price, you know, and, and the fact that this horse has just com completely run some duds in the past, I looked for an alternative. Now, don't hate me. <laughs> I went to Adagio today. And Ron Nicoletti did not. So that is the biggest thing. Uh, Ron Nicoletti's <laughs> Adagio's biggest fan. And that's really sad that he didn't stick with it one more time. He's off the bandwagon. You know, I've knocked this horse plenty of times because it just took him so long to break his maiden but that said um, he did he was running against you know bottom level claimers there but off of his maiden score he stepped up to that open $16,000 race and I thought he ran a heck of a lot better than what I thought he would so with that I don't think and this race is much easier than what he faced last time out. It definitely is. It's not the saltiest of fields in here. He ran a respectable third last time. Gone Jack one by five. So you see him beaten by six lengths. I thought he ran a pretty good race. And he's he's taking a slight drop in class to the 12-5 here. But I think that it is, I agree, easier competition than what he faced last time out. And sometimes maidens for Antonio Sano, they take a while to break their maiden. But then once they do, they tend to stay in good form. So he's definitely one to respect in here. I just went with um, another horse that um, is also taking a bit of a drop in class in here and is coming out of some pretty solid races in the five over limit, cutting back in distance to the six furlongs once again, who actually ran pretty well at the mile last time, but last time he sprinted, he was running behind three next out winners in Tranquilo, Gone Jack, and Forrest Waltz. So I think he's coming out of some solid competition, but those were the two in my mind in this race. Yeah, I could definitely see that too over limit. Obviously, um, uh, Tranquilo was a horse or is a horse that has been in very good form kind of at that same level. And he gets in once again with a lightweight with the seven pound apprentice, Carlos Hernandez in the saddle. But that is races one through five. Keisha walked you through her early pick five ticket. We're gonna take a quick break. And when we come back, we will show you our 20 cent rainbow six and late pick five tickets. There's still more left to come right after this. At Express Bet, we celebrate the champions that make horse racing great. That's why we provide more ways to bet from more places than ever. We've built an entire family of brands to give players more of the rewards they deserve give bettors the information they need to win and provide a community for horse bettors. Because the best way to support the champions of horse racing is to champion horse racing. Express Bet. We are racing. back to Gulfstream today. Gabby Gaudet joined by Acacia Courtney. Now looking at the 20 cent Rainbow Six. We have a carryover over $170,000 in that sequence today. So I did come up with a ticket and I did find a single today, keeping it affordable with $64.80. I thought race eight, it's a maiden special weight. There's so many first time starters in there. I don't know what to do with them. Some of them been, have been working very badly. Some of them have been working kind of <laughs> 
average, and who knows what the track condition is going to be like by that time. So I wanted coverage in that race, but going to be singling on Artie Type in the seventh race for Chad Brown. There's a Joe Sharp horse that I think could definitely win, but tough post position way outside. So having some confidence there, using three horses to start things off, just two in the ninth, three by three for the Rainbow Six. And we do start it off with a maiden special weight at seven furlongs on the main track. And I was kind of going back and forth between both Collective Wisdom and the Four Illustrious Sun. And I finally made my decision just thinking that the rail post position is really going to hurt Collective Wisdom. I totally agree with you there. And I thought that the race did go between those two as well. Those were the main couple that I was looking for. A little interesting tidbit. Collective Wisdom is, of course, half to stakes winner and grade one placed horse Mexicoma. But that also does make him half to Overture, who's a Bill Mott first time starter in that eighth race. So maybe a little bit of uh, interesting to see if we can get the, the brothers uh, winning on uh, this Wednesday afternoon. But Illustrious Sun, I thought, actually ran pretty well last time out at the mile distance. Does get the blinkers on here today. Unfortunately, clipped heels as the heavy favorite to start back so you put a line through that and is left with a couple of solid races and i wonder how it's really going to shake out from a kind of a, a speed perspective we obviously have illustrious son who went to the lead last time out and he dueled he didn't go that fast on the front end but i think i'll give him a little bit of a pass considering that might not be where he wants it looks like he just ran a better race at least visually um, when he had a target to run behind when he ran behind top brass so I'm interested to see the, the dynamic or the tactic that they do take here today. But collective wisdom, um, I, I do like the cutback and dis, or I like the, the fact that he's staying at seven furlongs, but he's not fast enough to clear from the rail. And he's just, we've seen it just be problematic for horses with this kind of mid pack type of running style, draw the rail post at seven eights. And that's kind of what I was thinking as well. And he, it, he's definitely not going to go. And if he does go, he's not going to be comfortable because that doesn't look like what rare he wants to be. I think that the seven eights definitely suits him much better. He's had five starts so far, three of those with training. Ralph Nix came off in an extended layoff with the barn switch and his last three races um, take out the mile one a couple starts back he just didn't really show anything not sure what happened there and his others are okay but uh, I just wasn't sure how he'd be able to work out a trip in this race here and you bring up a good point about the pace scenario because then you are also left with a first time starter who's actually a $600,000 purchase in the number six Mr. Louise for Antonio Sano uh, nothing really special on the work tab really uh, uh, Roberto Alvarado going to be in the saddle today and uh, looking at the pedigree too we see how uh, how Uncle Mo's progeny has been doing. So that's always encouraging. Seven furlongs, not always easy to win at first asking on the main track here at Gulfstream. And he's debuting as a four-year-old. On the bottom side, Call Maria, she hasn't produced any crazy notable foals. So although I do like this horse, I think the two to the, towards the inside might be um, more accomplished. And maybe this is a, a race to kind of get under his belt to stretch out to the mile or to two turns eventually as well. We'll get to the seventh race. This $30,000 non-winners of two lifetime event going to the mile on the turf. And of course, race seven kicks off the 50 cent late pick five. Did you find, did you have the same single as I did or a different one or none at all? I did not. <laughs> I, I used the same horse. I like Artie type a lot. I did back myself up with that Joe Sharp horse that you were talking about in the 10 taste for talent, but is coming off a year layoff and has that tough outside post. So that's going to be a big asking. If I were to single, it would have been right here in the first leg. But a little bit protective today. I'm just using two horses in the eighth race, which really makes me nervous because I don't know what to make about that maiden race either. So using a couple that I found some good stats for um, in Jacob's Rocket Girl and Sassy Slew, then just two deep in the ninth, spreading in the tenth with four horses, and then three deep in the finale. Once again, $48. Okay, we get to the seventh race, and we take a look at the one arty type. We'll go back to his last performance, and this was on the drop from a Allowance optional claiming company to that $30,000 level. We can see he's the number five horse that day. And sitting a little bit closer to the pace than what we had previously seen him sit, um, he was stretching out from seven and a half furlongs in his last two tries to the mile and a 16th. So it kind of figured as much that he would um, sit a bit closer. 
And I guess the concern is that he didn't win this race. You know, he had kind of the full opportunity to win and just could not deliver. We see Uncle Guy closing from off of the pace and just getting him right at the finish line. And I think Uncle Guy probably had a lot of momentum. We can see Artie type kind of grinding out that run coming down the stretch. I just like him because he's accomplished. This is the right level and he draws a great inside post position. And he's third off the layoff in here too. And it's good to watch that race again because we did see Uncle Guy earlier on in the card to so maybe take a look at how he runs to try and uh, gauge a little bit of what kind of race li that he's coming out of. But we will show a stat on trainer Chad Brown in the past five years too. And uh, this is interesting because you don't necessarily think about Chad Brown in uh, mid-level claiming races. But with horses in the money last time out in mid-level claiming on the turf, he's 37% win, 75% of the time in the money. And it's a nearly even ROI of 190. So not often do you see Chad in uh, these claiming races, but he does have success, and especially when it looks like a horse is going to take that next step forward. And I think a lot's different in this race in that, yes, we had a Mike Maker horse who kind of was pretty legitimate in that race with Uncle Guy. In here, it, it, there's kind of a lot going on, and Artie Type is definitely the proven horse in here. The only really main foe is the 10 takes for talent, but as we were alluding to earlier, he he draws an outermost post position, and he hasn't been seen since last February. He hasn't, and he wired the field last time out in, in February of 2016. And for what it's worth, I didn't show the stat because it's a very small sample, but it, with 180-plus day layoff and winners last time out on the turf, Joe Sharp is two for four winning and three for four in the money and an ROI of more than $3. So he's not done it a lot of times, but he's had a lot of success with it. So that is why I did use this horse. And even in his debut, he kind of threw his head at the start. He didn't break that sharply, but he still managed to finish second by Justin Eck. And then, as, as I said, wired the field last time. So if he shows a lot of speed from that outside post, but he will just have to work out that trip. He will have to show a lot of speed from the outside post position. I'm, he could very well wire as he did um, before the layoff here. And I saw the same stat that you did, but actually just overall Joe Sharp with 180 day layoffs on the turf. He's five for 17, 29% and a positive positive ROI of $3.31. So he can get one ready off the layoff. But uh, besides him, I kind of was interested a little bit in the two quality counts. He did face winners for the last uh, last time. Um, an OK performance. I wouldn't say it was anything great. But uh, he draws a good post position. And he could just sit that stalking trip. So one to maybe use. And also, uh, you gave some interest to the eight power driven one final time. I'm <laughs> one final time <laughs> is, is exactly the word I'm going to stick with him and one more Scooter time. And maybe Scooter Dickey's doing that too. Maybe, <laughs> because he comes back just in seven days. He had a work since last time out when he tried to get him on the turf. Unfortunately, he kind of stumbled, just lost his action, was eased up out of that race. But it was just a week ago, as I said, he had a, a good work, actually. Four furlongs in 48 and one on February 18th. So one more try for Power Driven. All right, we'll get to the eighth race on the card to kick off the final pick four of the day. Six furlongs onto the main track for the state bred maiden special weight. And boy, did I have a tough <laughs> time. I think I started with researching pedigrees mm -hmm. and then I went to uh, statistics for every single trainer in the race. It mm -hmm. took me a long time to try to figure out. And then uh, talking to <laughs> Mike Welsh this morning, obviously DRF Clocker uh, report. He's, this horse has not been getting great workouts, the two sa sassy <laughs> slew. So it's kind of, um, you know, a, a shot in the dark here. You did land on a horse that did have some experience, the one Jacob's Rocket Girl. I did, and I kind of took the same approach that you did. And watching Jacob's Rocket Girl's first race, her experience, I guess, if you could really give it that, at least it is one time on the racetrack. She was going three and a half furlongs up at Northlands in Canada, um, and she did finish second actually by just ahead was disqualified and placed fourth but she's making her first start for trainer Ralph Nixon coming off of about a four month freshening since October getting late six for the debut and kind of as we said taking those uh, approach looking for stats first after the trainer switch and made in special weights at Gulfstream Ralph is five for 25 so 20 percent win 40 percent in the money and it's a, a, an ROI just under two dollars and um, this is a horse that I just think excuse me a, a trainer that I think just does very good work with uh, maidens with first-time starters horses making their second start 
And there are, there are a couple works that do hint at ability since that debut, and maybe the experience is all that this filly needs to uh, get to the winner's circle, though she does have the rail to deal with. And we've always seen Ralph Nix, either with his two-year-olds or his three-year-olds, what have you, at the maiden level. He's always very strong. He, he prepares his um, young horses very well. So Jacob's Rocket Girl could be one to use. I did land on the two Sassy Slew, though. I like um, a little bit of the pedigree here on the bottom side, the mare. She was an eight-time winner on the dirt, and she made about $120,000. She was actually really good on an off track, so we could see that come into play if we do get that rain um, later on today. And she also did produce two winners at two, so the foals have been pretty precocious, although the work tab is, um, it hasn't been really flashy. Jose Pynchon with first-time starters sprinting on the dirt at the maiden special weight level. He's 21% out of 33 horses and an even ROI of $2. So I, th some of those things, that was the reason why I picked this horse on top. But by no means I, would I single this horse or do anything <laughs> like that. I, I think this is a race you want to have some coverage in. It is, and I saw those same stats. And um, all three siblings for this filly, they, they did win. A couple of them did win early, as you said. But they did take multiple starts to kind of get going. There were no first-time starters to get the win. But um, a horse that probably will get some attention is the three Overture, who, as I alluded to earlier, is a half to Mexicoma, as well as Collective Wisdom, who's in uh, race at number six today. But Bill Mott, first time starters. This filly was a $385,000 purchase. She is debuting in state bred competition and gets Lasix and Jose Ortiz. And Overture, yes, we could see her perform well today. We also have the seven R next role here. First time starter for Ralph Saidi. He had a good weekend. He actually had two winners on Monday's program. So a good weekend last weekend looking to carry that over today. And uh, if you look on the pedigree, this filly is by Overdriven. She's out of a mare who won first time out, and she was best on the dirt. And she's kin to um, a horse who was multiple stakes place sprinting. So there is a bit of pedigree, and I think she might have some of the more flashy workouts to showcase. Definitely does. Four furlongs and 47 flat at Gulfstream Park West for her most recent bullet. So it looks like she's coming in sharp. Um, this barn with first-time starters on the dirt and maiden special weight is just one for 11. So uh, we'll see see how this uh, filly does come. Uh, as you mentioned, the pedigree, though, she's definitely one to respect. But this is a tough race to make sense of. Mm -hmm. I think I'm going to look at these horses <laughs> in the paddock later, uh -huh. and then I'm going to play the late pick four and kind of, you know, a a cross <laughs> a couple horses out and obviously bet the ones that I like physically in there because that's a tough one to have confidence in. We'll get to the ninth race, though, a 62.50, non-winners of three lifetime claiming events, one turn mile onto the main track. And I had a really tough time with this race just given the track record of many horses in the field and uh, including your top selection Madrews who's two for 19 on form. And on I, the dirt. I, I couldn't believe that I picked <laughs> this horse on top, but I did. Um, and the reason is, is that David Brownlee has actually been having a, a sneaky good meet, and he's had some winners come at some big prices. Nick Juarez stays in the saddle. And this horse actually didn't run terribly in his last two starts. And what I think is the key is that I do think that he's got some speed. I think he's going to go from the rail. The only other horse that has really shown speed was the two Velvet Colors, who seems to show a lot more of that speed on the turf. Um, and I don't really know if there's going to be anybody to go and this is how exactly how this horse got his last win i remember this that day um, in the summer here at july at Gulfstream. so he hasn't won since july but he went out and there was nobody really there to challenge him and that could be just exactly what happens again today it very well could look i'm not knocking anybody's <laughs> selection in here the eight <laughs> olympic bid who is where i went to for joe orsino is listed as a first time gelding today and has a win on the main track and limited starts on the main track too. He's got a victory out of just six starts on a fast main track, a couple in the money performances too. Um, whether or not that's gonna transition from Fort Erie and of course Woodbine, we shall see, but I think he's meeting a much more manageable group. He is facing Starter Allowance Company that actually wasn't a bad field in his most recent start. He is coming off of a layoff, so obviously a concern. And of course the nine conscious decision is another one who showed a little bit of early speed but then faded I don't know I, I couldn't have confidence in him <laughs> you kind of liked the three granite Denny dad I did and this is a hard horse to like too just kind of uh, looking at some of the races that he's put in but he is relatively consistent 
we get to the 10th race to kick off the first half of the late daily double a mile and a 16th onto the main track for this two other than allowance optional claimer and we'll go back and just show you the video spotlight of the five at Nauset Beach last time out for trainer Terry Pompey and the finish was so close that I really thought that <sighs> He actually won this race. We see High Riverside in the mix here, too. He wound up winning. Um, I believe it was a photo finish, too, for a long photo mm -hmm. finish. They were trying to figure out who actually won the race. But they were a, a grueling stretch battle coming down the lane here. And I thought a super performance for Nauset Beach. That was stretching out to nine furlongs. That was the second start off of the layoff. What do you do with him here today? It's very tough, and it, it was stretching out, as you said, and standing on the ground in the winner's circle last time out, it actually even did look like Nauset Beach might have held on for the win. Paco Lopez stays aboard, and we'll show a stat on trainer Terry Pompey in the past five years with horses in the money last time out going a route of ground on the dirt. She's 20% win, 45% in the money, and a 235 ROI. Now, what I think is going to be the toughest task for this horse is if he's going to be able to repeat a performance like that if he's going to be able to handle any sort of the speed challenges that he'll probably have in this race. Heck of a shot has speed. Conquest Windy, Windy City has speed from the rail. It doesn't look like he might be able to hold on like he did last time out because it does look like he's better on the front end. I totally agree. And this is a sh sh cutting back a little bit in distance. And he's kind of, he could just be pressing or dueling on the front end with those other horses that you mentioned. Um, so you and I both going towards opposite directions and one of them being the six Papa Zulu who comes out of the Poseidon. And if that pace scenario does come to fruition, well, he's going to be loving that. That's exactly what I thought. And Archinova, your top pick, could sit just the perfect stocking trip, and that's why I respect him there as well. But Papa Zulu was running against incredibly tough competition last time, an imperative Stanford and made from Lucky. He finished fourth behind those three in the in the Poseidon, which top to bottom was just a very competitive race. I love to see Tyler Gaffleon climbing aboard today. I like him here in this spot, and tactically speaking, to the outside, he could just be closing from off of it and just uh, pick up the pieces. I think the race was a little bit better visually than it looks on paper. He really started to pick off horses one by one, closing from off of it. And unfortunately, it looked like Made from Lucky was just to his outside, and he glued him down on the rail. He said, you're not going <laughs> to have any room to run. We're going to keep you in a tight spot there. So um, it was a good performance from Papa Zulu. I like him in second. But Archinova towards the inside for trainer Ian Wilkes. This is another horse who did make the lead last time out under Chris Landeros um, at Churchill. We can see Kismet's heels in the running lines. That horse came back to run an 87, 85 buyer speed figure versus allowance company here. So though they've really um, been consistent, at least transferring their form from Kentucky to here in South Florida. But I ultimately think that this horse is much better when he has a target to run to. Um, I don't think he likes dueling on the front end, and I don't think he's naturally the fastest horse in the race. So uh, by virtue of the pace in the race, he's going to get that kind of setup where he can get a target in front of him. He really will be sitting just in the catbird seat if it does come uh, to set up for him as well. And, and I agree with you. I think even two starts back, he finished ahead of the highly touted Gettysburg. And so I think he's coming out of good races too. Those were my top two in here. Of course, heck of a shot. Now third off the layoff does look to have some speed too for Todd Fletcher. We get to the 11th and final race on the card, a maiden $20,000 race, seven and a half furlongs onto the turf and the four tis the sound. We'll show you this um, performance last time out. Now this was when this horse did drop down from maiden special weight to the maiden claiming level. And unfortunately, he just got into a very troubled trip. He was the number five this day for Dale Romans. Corey Lannery was in the saddle that day and everything looks like it's going to be just fine right here. Um, but then it gets a little bit tight going into the turn and still he manages to have a good position here. But then he kind of gets sandwiched by horses. A horse comes in over on him. You can see him check severely going into the turn. And then we once again see him kind of towards the back of the pack. Now he lost all position when he did get sandwiched by those horses in the first turn. And then he's just waiting, waiting waiting, waiting for some room to run. Unfortunately, he checks again. He steadies maybe a little bit green. And then from there, he starts to kind of pick up the pieces, pick up the momentum and finish third. But 
a lot of trouble to <laughs> overcome in order for this horse to have such a game performance. He, he still checks. <laughs> He's still checking going down the stretch. So it very was, tough. It was a nightmare race for, for Tis the Sound. And this was a hard horse to like because she was actually exposed against Maiden Claiming Company prior to that finishing. Second disqualified to third against Maiden. $30,000 types and then Tried special weight again, was an no-go, drop her back down to the maiden 20 last time, but she just had a nightmare trip. And she's still a four-year-old filly, even though she's had 11 races, it, there still may be some greenness in there for sure and just had a really tough time of it. Now, I, I used her in here. I would I single her? No, but I do think that she's definitely going to be the one, respe one to respect. Hopefully she gets a cleaner trip. Your top selection, the two, Vizzy Girl, could be the main speed in here, which is what I was kind of looking at. I thought the 12 street performer to the outside has speed, but she is, has a terrible post in here again, too. Terrible post, and that's why I kind of picked her in third there and having a little bit of confidence with these top two, but did use those three in terms of the pick six. I think that she's just a better horse going two turns. Talking about the two, Vizzy Girl, and she stretches out to seven and a half for a long today. She's been going five eights on the turf. So took a little bit of a price there, but I do think that the four Tis the Sound is the horse to beat. Now, we are running out of time. That is races one through 11. Thank you for joining us here on Golfstream today. Looks like it might be coming down a little bit outside, so we'll keep you posted on the weather. But up next, Pete Aiello is up with those scratches and changes. Good luck. We have to take care of these horses that you know give us so much joy. Being accredited.